everyone. Bon dia. Bon dia a todos. Um, we're very pleased as uh, the president of the U.S. Angola Chamber of Commerce to bring you this panel on investing in Angola this morning. Angola has a fantastic story to tell. There's been a lot of robust change, a lot of reform. As opposed to my actually doing the opening remarks for this panel, I'm going to call on someone who is highly, highly competent in the area of being able to do so. I will first call on Dr. Uh, Abrel. He's the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Angola, and he will make some opening comments to help us set this panel, and then we will begin with our questioning. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. Uh, first of all, and uh, as this is our first time participating on, uh, on a summit like uh, we are here today, I don't know if you are hearing it. Okay, good. Uh, I would like first to uh, to thank the, organ the, organizers of, uh, the organizers of this event, uh, the magazine, uh, African Investor Magazine, as well as the NYSC and uh, the Euronext, for the opportunity and honor that uh, the Angolan delegation has to uh, share some of the uh, recent developments of our economy, as well as the, uh, uh, the approach that the government is taking in the implementation of the National uh, uh, Development Plan uh, we, um, and I, I would possibly address, uh, uh, give you a, a very brief uh, overview on our recent developments, starting from the impact of the crisis in Angola in 2009, 2008. Uh, we were growing at a very uh, fast pace uh, before the impact of the crisis. Uh, Angola was uh, uh, before uh, 2002 uh, in a long period of war and uh, after 2002 we were able to indeed initiate a very comprehensive approach for the development and growth of our economy. So be between 2002 and 2008 uh, the idea was uh, based on two pillars mainly uh, uh, which were the uh, reconstruction of the country as well as the macroeconomic stability as ways for sustainable growth. Uh, indeed, we were able to, to, to reach those objectives until the impact of the crisis in 2008, 2009, which uh, uh, indeed uh, 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 evidenced the need for our uh, enhancement of our macroeconomic framework as well as the way for diversi diversification of our uh, economy. The Angolan economy, as you know, is um, very dependent on the, on the oil uh, uh, production and exploration. Uh, it accounts for 76% of our budget revenue, as well as 98% of our exports. And that dependency uh, was extremely evident in the, during the period of crisis, where the, the revenue, the fiscal revenue, as well as the revenue from the exports uh, declined dramatically. So that uh, raised the issue of having the, uh, or, or introducing and accelerate the process of diversification of our uh, uh, revenue streams, both on the fiscal side and the external accounts, and obviously continue the stabilization process in our economy, uh, uh, providing that we had a decrease uh, a process of our, on, on our inflation, but obviously allowing growth to happen within, uh, within the economy. Our international reserves have been growing since 2002, and from 2002 until 2008, uh, uh, the reserves uh, grew 10 times during that period. Uh, the reason for that was the domestic savings coming from the fiscal uh, surpluses, as well as the current account surpluses, which were uh, uh, elements that provided uh, the opportunity for growth on our reserves. Uh, obviously, that uh, the crisis uh, had an impact on those reserves, on the saving, on the public saving side, and uh, uh, the idea of establishing uh, 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 the, the fiscal buffers and the macroeconomic buffers to continue support the need for public investments by the country, and uh, uh, obviously contributing for the growth, was one of the main concerns of the, gro the government during the preparation of this new uh, national development plan. So we are currently addressing not only the, uh, the issue of having the continuous opportunity for investment on the infrastructure, which is one of the challenges 
that most of the countries in the emerging markets uh, face, and obviously uh, uh, trying also to improve uh, uh, the quality or the stability of our financial system and our macroeconomic framework. So we are currently addressing three main issues uh, or three main areas uh, which are under extreme or, or very deep uh, structural adjustment. Obviously, one is the, the macroeconomic framework and the improvement of our macroeconomic uh, framework, both on the fiscal side as well as on the monetary and external account side. And uh, a third element there, obviously, the, uh, the dissemination and the transparency issue on the data that the government is putting across uh, uh, and available to any investor or, or, or international partner. On the uh, financial system regulatory and supervisory framework, we've been uh, very active and at the central bank level, and obviously we have also on this panel uh, some colleagues from other regulatory entities which have been addressing issues on the convergence of the Angolan regulatory framework to the international standards. Mm -hmm. So we are now completing Basel uh, uh, II uh, principles implementation, as well as addressing Basel III and uh, we have the Capital Markets Commission and the Insurance uh, uh, Commission being uh, now uh, uh, established, moving forward towards the openness of those uh, uh, two important segments on our financial system. Currently, the banking system in Angola comprises 23 banks, uh, and it's uh, the most or the biggest uh, 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 sector uh, on our financial system. It accounts for 98% of our uh, financial system. So when we talk about uh, our banking industry or even our financial system, we are talking about a very uh, liquid and a very uh, 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 robust financial system with no leverage coming from any uh, uh, debt uh, instruments or even capital openness of our uh, financial institutions. Uh, and that's why, uh, and giving the sense of uh, need to continuously in, uh, invest in the infrastructure of the country and also on, on education, we have to uh, uh, converge to the international uh, uh, standards, allowing our financial institutions to also participate on the global uh, uh, capital markets, and obviously allowing investors to also participate on our domestic market. On the market infrastructure and market integrity, uh, very uh, profound, uh, 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 profound uh, changes have also uh, been introduced. Uh, we, uh, in 2011, uh, we finalized uh, the financial, uh, financial system assessment program uh, by the IMF, which gave us a clear vision of what are the challenges for development of our uh, uh, national payment system and also uh, the, 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 the clearance system. One important element there on, our, on the market integrity is obviously the issue of compliance, AML and CFT, which Angola have been addressing uh, with a very uh, strong sense and high, high level commitment uh, uh, of uh, establishing a very uh, strong and comprehensive uh, uh, AML and C and CFT system. I would uh, stop here and, uh, and wait for uh, any questions and uh, we'll be pleased to, uh, to come back to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that introduction and that overview of uh, Angola today. I'd like to start with uh, the questions that we have before us to our panelists. And again, I'll come back to you, Dr. Abreu. We've heard a lot about the establishment of the Sovereign Wealth Fund in Angola. And we'd like you to tell us a bit about the fund, outline the investment policy framework that the fund will be pursuing, and talk to us about uh, some of the co-investment opportunities that exist for global institutional investors to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, the idea of establishment of the Angolan Sovereign Wealth Fund is not new. Uh, during or before the impact of the crisis, uh, uh, discussions uh, uh, arise uh, in regards of the establishment of a savings instrument because the, the Angolan international reserves are growing at a very fast pace. As I mentioned before, uh, they grew between 2002 to 2008 10 times. So we, 
In 2002, we were at a level of $2.3 billion in terms of uh, international reserves. In 2008, uh, we reached the $20 billion uh, uh, mark. So the idea was to establish um, a savings instrument that would allow for uh, uh, the future generations, uh, uh, um, well, saving for the future generations. Uh, obviously that the impact of the crisis uh, uh, indeed postponed the establishment of such instrument because in the end of the day, uh, the crisis and the, 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 the dramatic reduction on the, on the fiscal revenue endanger partially some of the uh, uh, infrastructure investments which were actually on the way. So the idea uh, uh, improved and, and currently the scenario uh, is that the sovereign wealth fund would have uh, these two main roles. One, obviously the role of, uh, of an, uh, savings for future generations, but also contributing for the sustainable investment on the infrastructure projects and very strategic projects of the country. So those are the main two roles of our uh, uh, sovereign wealth fund. Obviously, uh, and during that time, government was also able to establish the stability buffers on our uh, 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 fiscal framework and also uh, monetary and external accounts. So uh, this uh, sovereign wealth fund will not have a stability role. We have other instruments to provide the stability role. Uh, the, the sovereign wealth fund uh, of Angola would be, will be mainly dedicated to uh, uh, savings for future generations, whereby uh, investing on a diversified portfolio uh, uh, of assets, and on the other side, obviously, looking into the, the continuous uh, uh, sustainability of investment in, infra in infrastructure. Uh, obviously, that um, looking on both sides of the, uh, 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 of the asset liability framework, uh, the public-private partnerships would be uh, obviously very uh, welcome and, and, and positive in the sense of allowing a stronger contribution on the, on the uh, infrastructure investment side uh, 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 of Angola and the continuity of those, uh, of those projects. Uh, and obviously, uh, uh, on the sense of uh, 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 investment on the, on the, on the diversified portfolio of, um, of assets, uh, well, we will have the, uh, the various uh, 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 stakeholders and playmakers in the, in the international global uh, capital markets. Obviously, the main concern of the, uh, the Angolan government now is, uh, is the uh, maintain the social and, and political stability, uh, as well as the macroeconomic stability as uh, sources of attraction and uh, uh, opportunity for uh, uh, international, international events, investors. But uh, uh, obviously, we need to, uh, to have also the sense that we are talking about a country which only had 10 years of opportunity to establish a comprehensive national development plan. So uh, we are still a country working in progress to, uh, in the end of the day, uh, position ourselves as one of the, uh, the major economies in sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you, Dr. Abru. That leads nicely to the second question that I wanted to pose. When you talk about uh, private-public partnerships and uh, the attraction of uh, outside investors, let me now turn to Mr. Gilberto Luto, who's the director of the Tax Reform Unit in the Ministry of Finance, and ask him a question to tell us about the strategy to create a conducive environment for long-term investors in Angola. Mr. Luto. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much. I will start to, to beg a pardon for the audience for my terrible English, but uh, uh, I... I must talk, so I will talk. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as you know, uh, there are some factors uh, uh, that um, affect the investment decision, like uh, market size and political and legal and macro macroeconomic stability, uh, access to infrastructures, uh, available and cost of qualified worker, financial costs, 
access to raw materials, access to export markets, and uh, of course the tax factors. Uh, government uh, of Angola uh, established a program from tax reform in 2010, and this program uh, have a free, uh, free measure uh, goals or, object, or objectives, uh, like diversification uh, of the source revenues of the Angola state, uh, guarantee of the high social and tax justice as well, uh, equitable uh, in re redistribution of wealth, and developing the condition for the balanced and sustained economy development of uh, Angola Re Republic. Well, uh, this uh, the setting of the stable tax condition, the leverage investment results in a triculation of five elements, like rates, uh, benefits, and service quality, transparency, and establishment of legislation. And uh, there are some of them, some of these factors uh, of some of these elements represent direct costs of the taxes and uh, the others indirect cost of the taxes. And uh, I can say if the reform uh, that is, is the, my, my primary uh, objective in this in this uh, approach is uh, the reform has already introduced vari uh, various change in uh, three specific areas, like uh, streamlining uh, from reduction of the categories on stamp duties, classic classification of the tax taxation rates on capital employee, and uh, the station extension of the tax base uh, from obligation to make uh, a tax deduction at source to regarding a real estate tax and reinforcing the real estate register, register, I'm sorry, uh, station of the incidence base of the tax on capital employee and a station of the incidence base on taxes on consumption. Uh, we, also, we also do uh, reduction, uh, or we expect to do reduction on industrial tax rate, uh, reduction on the real estate tax rate, and reductions on customs fees on industrial equipment. equipment. Uh, I can, I can, I can say also uh, that the reform in, in process aims to rebalancing, rebalancing the tax weight of uh, uh, companies in line with the OECD countries. Uh, uh, matter of fact, we expect uh, have a, an uh, increase of revenues individuals uh, about uh, 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 30 percent of the, the total of the revenues uh, in general. Uh, uh, I, can, I, can, I can say the tax reform is uh, one of the major program, an ambitious program from the, uh, Angola's government, but is not the only one because uh, it, uh, for for the for increase the environment uh, from invested uh, gov uh, Angola governments uh, also also do uh, another programs uh, like the uh, all laws like the laws of um, uh, private investment and the uh, law from from micro enterprises and uh, small uh, enterprises. And uh, I think, uh, uh, I think it's, it's uh, a, a lot of things that uh, we do uh, until now 
to, to, re, to re, reinforce this environment from uh, all investors, investors uh, um, from national and foreign investors. I think I can stop from here. Thank you, Mr. Luther. Uh, the next question I'm going to pose is to Mr. Archer Manguera. Mr. Manguera is the president of the Capital Markets Commission in Angola. Mr. Mangueira, there is much interest in your plans to launch Angola's Stock Exchange. Can you tell us where you are in the process and how investors may be able to access opportunities? Yes. Thank you, Jenny. The future uh, Angolan Stock Exchange will be a government-owned institution. At the moment, the executive has uh, uh, nominated a commission that will uh, select the electronic infrastructure for trading and post-trading trading, uh, uh, systems on way of establishment of the Angolan Stock Exchange. During the first semester uh, of uh, 2014, we, we predicted that the operator special, uh, special, specialized in trading uh, foreign debt instrument will be able to do so. At this uh, stage, the post-trading uh, post uh, system will be provided by the central bank, the BNA, during uh, 2014. Uh, we predicted that uh, the remain market uh, infrastructure, namely post-trading uh, services and the uh, regulatory uh, framework, including the new security law, will uh, uh, enable the launch of the stock and corporate debt market. The uh, admission of uh, security to exchange, especially stocks, uh, uh, will be uh, subjected to the fulfillment of set of governance standards. We uh, emphasize that uh, regard to governance and disclosure standard, there is a long way to go to reach the international benchmark. Having that in mind, we produced a code of, a code of conduct with good business practices and also created an innovative department that uh, will hide potentially listed uh, companies to reach the appropriate standard of corporate governance. Consequently, despite the creation of regulatory and uh, uh, infrastructure condition for equity trading on regulated market in, in 2014, providing a window of opportunity for some companies to be listed already this year. But rise of public companies in sufficient number to establishment a liquidity pool with continuous trading session on stock exchange market are all expected in 2016. Regarding the access to the opportunities provided by the Angolan market, at the moment, the main restriction is the existence foreign exchange controls, which are under revision. Fortunately, at the moment, there is ongoing debate on how to address the capital and financial account issue in order to allow foreign capital inflows and outflows. A lot 
of ideas are on the table. For instance, in the uh, initial phase, we can allow uh, portfolio investment provided that those flows uh, do not create short-term speculative volatility that can have a significant negative impact to the, our national strategic stability objectives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mangueira. I'd like to turn now to hear a little bit from some of our private sector representatives as well on some of the opportunities that are um, currently available uh, in Angola. I'll first turn to Mr. Uh, Luis Lelich. He's the executive board member of BAI, which is the Banco Angolano de Investimentos. And the question is, what are the investment projects in Angola you are prioritizing for your clients? What recommendations would you give to institutional investors who are interested in participating in those projects? Thank you, Janine. Well, um, I would like to thank you, everybody, for this opportunity. Um, Luis, Luis Lara. <laughs> sorry. Why am I nervous? I'm not supposed to be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Angolan government has designed uh, what's called uh, the 2025 vision, um, and this vision uh, indicates nine pillars of um, nine sets of uh, interdependent activities, uh, also known as clusters, uh, and they um, they interact between themselves. These clusters are what water, energy or power, as it was uh, mentioned here, agro industry, housing, transportation logistical uh, platforms, mineral resources, oil and gas, textile industry, and tourism. Those are the sectors that we are also recommending to people that are going to Angola and making the investment. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, the governmental initiative for, uh, for this type of projects is, is appointing for uh, investments of $50.7 billion between 2013 to 2017 in, po in, power, in power generation, transportation, uh, and energy represents 67% of it. We're talking around $16 billion. That is the main sector. You can, we cannot develop anything else without a proper functioning um, a power generation transportation and distribution uh, system. Um, we still are very dependent on oil and gas, but there is a huge push to diversify the economy. What I would recommend to people that are looking into Angola is to look at the National Development Program, which is public, um, and is, uh, it can be retrieved from the sites of the Ministry of Planning or Economic Planning and Ministry of Finance. It's 200 pages, it's in Portuguese, again, but it's easy to, uh, to read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's even, <laughs> you know, just hire a good translator and he will make sure that you understand that. The recommendations for people that are going to Angola uh, are very simple. Please make sure that you have a clear and deep understanding of the Angolan legal and regulatory framework. Um, Sometimes people go to Angola and say, well, in the U.S. or in Portugal, we do things like that. Well, Angola is a sovereign country. We have our own legal and regulatory framework. There are some, there are some uh, legal counselors that came in our delegation. Please talk to them. Um, we try to be aligned to the best practices. Uh, but again, being a sovereign country, we do have our own constitution and our laws that need to be fulfilled. And then also there is ANIP. Um, ANIP is the Angolan uh, Promotion uh, of Investment, National Promotion of Investment Agency. Uh, they're based in DC uh, they're, and they're doing a very good job make, uh, you know, in, in interacting with potential investors and finding also opportunities and indicating where the opportunities are in Angola. The other recommendation that, I'm, the second recommendation that I make is Make sure you build friendships through networking. Um, 
Don't come on Thursday. Don't fly in on Thursday. Have a meeting on Friday and fly out on Friday evening. It doesn't happen like that. You know, if you do this, um, people, until people invite you to, co to come to our houses, you have not concluded the business. Yeah, you know, it's, don't, you know, just exchanging business cards does not mean that you have concluded a business. You know, stay, uh, make sure that you stay for a week, two weeks, even though it might seem expensive, but if you're thinking long term, if you're thinking long term, then uh, you will be successful. That leads me to my third recommendation. Think long term, be patient. This is what the Chinese are doing in Angola, and that's why they're successful. They have a 99-year plan. That's the way <laughs> that people see, should think. Um, investing, I always say to people that come to Angola, investing in, in Angola is for marathon runners, not for sprinters. <laughs> Usain, Bolt, Usain Bolt will not be successful in Angola. You know, that's why the Ethiopians are, you know, successful, you know, because they can run 42 miles or so, I don't know. And the fourth recommendation that I make is do not cut corners. Do not cut corners. Um, play fair and by the rules. Play fair and by the rules. Um, sometimes it will seem frustrating. Things take a little bit longer. But remember that we became independent in 1975, but the civil war on only ended in 2002. And then, even though it has been 13 years, but still there's a lot going on. The diversification of the economy, training people. So if you go uh, with a well, very well-designed long-term strategy, stick to it, build friendships, not networks, build friend, uh, friendships, then you will have success as most of the companies that are operating in Angola uh, are, are doing. Finally, when you go to Angola, look for us, Banco Angolan de Investimento, <laughs> the largest <laughs> private bank in Angola, set up 17 years ago. Uh, I, I really need to say that because my competitor is right there and he's going to mention, <laughs> he's going to be the last one to, to talk, but uh, we're just the largest private bank in Angola. And again, like my, uh, the, the, the lady from Botswana mentioned, yeah, okay, we're the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luis. That does lead nicely into our final uh, speaker this morning, who is uh, Pedro Coelho, who is the CEO of Standard Bank in Angola. And he too will give us some advice about, uh, from a private pe sector perspective, um, about uh, what, uh, what it takes to invest in Angola, what people should look for when they're entering the Angolan market. And so I will turn over to Pedro. Thank you, Janine. So since my colleague has told most of it, I'll be very brief. <laughs> <laughs> so basically in terms of key recommendations, uh, I would say again, uh, apart from what has been said in terms of the sectors, Apart from oil and gas, mining, power and infrastructure, agribusiness, I would say you should also focus on the general industries that will replace imports. Because as you know, there's a, a big, still a big flow of imports into the country. And we need to cater for the demand of the uh, rising middle income class. So I, I think this will be also, there will, there's a range of opportunities in that sector. And I guess this is not only common to Angola, but across Africa. Uh, I reinforce the message that my colleague referred about ANIP. I think uh, it has a lot of benefits, particularly on the tax uh, benefits that you can get. So you can negotiate special conditions depending on your uh, particular investment project. So uh, it is important that beforehand you really think uh, how much you're going to invest in Angola and you, uh, and you get the right advisor, uh, the right advisor to, to get you the, the best benefits possible and guarantee the repatriation of, of dividends. Uh, the other is important aspect is you have to be prepared for high setup costs. Uh, as you know, the cost of living is high in Angola, uh, although it has a tendency uh, to get cheaper as more offer is available in the country. But for the time being, uh, as you know, it is quite expensive. Uh, qualified human resources are scarce and expensive. So the focus is certainly for you as investors 
to train people and to get some retention mechanisms to guarantee the success of your business. So that way you can invest in uh, the human resources so you guarantee uh, the future having Angolans qualified in your uh, company. A local partnership is key to better understand the market and to get the necessary institutional support. Of course, it's not mandatory, but being a country with a very specific, uh, uh, very spe specific uh, points which you don't find uh, anywhere else in Africa due to the language, the legal system, uh, the way Angola operates, so I think it's beneficial that you look for a good uh, local institutional partner. Do not, uh, do not underestimate competition. I think a lot of people come to Angola uh, by thinking that it's just knocking uh, on death people, but it's not the case. So uh, in general, uh, investments are being done uh, using state-of-the-art technology and systems. So the country is leapfrogging a number of uh, waves of uh, evolution that other countries went through and is basically uh, using the best practices uh, in, in the country to the extent possible. Uh, again, uh, the, other, the other aspect is to use Angola uh, as a base for expansion into Africa. This might seem a bit odd, but uh, actually no more than, uh, you can do no more than other companies already doing being based in Angola. A number of these companies are actually having their base in Angola to expand across Africa. First, because of course they have an important investment in Angola, being Angola one of the key uh, growth markets in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and secondly, because geographically Angola is very well positioned to uh, really cater to, to really move across the borders and to be able to connect with other neighboring uh, countries. So we, we have seen a number of multinationals actually using uh, Angola as a hub to, to move uh, elsewhere. So I guess that's it for my, I would say that uh, again, you have Standard Bank <laughs> <laughs> as an alternative to buy <laughs> uh, an international bank that has been 150 years in Africa. And, uh, and that, of course, knows Angola and can give you experience, uh, can give you the idea of, of the experience of other uh, potential entrepreneurs that have, have been in the country, so more than happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. I think with that, I'd like to open it up to the floor to see if there are questions or clarifications that the audience would like to pose to the panel at this time. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Lourdes Capos Fernandes, a founder of LCF Legal Counsel Group, an Angolan lawyer. Thank you very much for the panel. I am going to ask two questions. One to Mr. Luther regarding the tax reform, and another one to BNA, Mr. Abril. But before that, I would like to congratulate some of, we, of you as a leaders and investors who were present on African Leadership Forum on Saturday. And we said that uh, price is the family when we are working too hard. But uh, for us, if you go to Angola without a lawyer, price is failing. <laughs> so make sure you comply with the recommendations from Lelis to get a local lawyer. To help you, we are going to base in Houston, <laughs> close to you. Just come to us. And then, the big, the big question I have to Mr. Luther. Angola has very good tax incentives to go there. And uh, as, a, as a one of the big companies in the world, Coca-Cola said one of the trips we did to South Africa to promote investment, stop going to the internet check in Angola, go there and your returns and your financial returns are gonna be huge. So, but they have very good tax incentives for you to invest there. I would like Mr. Luther to emphasize that because it's very quite unique to find 10 years, 15 years incentives if you make an investment. For Mr. Abreu, my question is about compliance. Most of the investors have FCPA to comply. We know lawyers and we can help. Have anti-bribery to comply. 
So how BNA is dealing with those international regulations? If you have laundry, money laundry rules, I would like you to talk about compliance for the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Loris. I think we had another question, the gentleman there. Bon dia. Yeah, um, actually, I'm from Mauritius. Uh, we are a stock exchange. I mean, we are listed on the main board in the property sector. So I heard from some friends that you are doing housing projects. Um, the so I'm quite interested to look in the bigger market. But when is your are you going to be is your stock exchange going to be ready? Uh, so that I mean, at least there's some exchange. Um, on the tax way, I mean tax question, of course, I would be interested to know more about the rates, uh, what is the incentives, as uh, the lawyer said. Yeah, thank you. If we don't have a third, then I'll take these right now. Um, Mr. Luther, I think you have two questions, both on the incentives and the tax rates for uh, investors. Um, and then, Dr. Abreu, you have the question on FCPA, uh, and Dr. Nongera on uh, when exactly the stock exchange will be ready. Uh, thanks, Union, uh, and thanks to, for for make a, for make you suffer a little bit a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, actually, in Angola, we have a. a uh, a new investment law, private investment law, and uh, uh, they, this law established um, a progressive, a progressive uh, system from uh, incentives, uh, tax incentives. Uh, uh, I want to mean, I want to mean, uh, I, I want to mean uh, the how much, uh, how much is the the value value that you invested. And uh, you you take uh, a biggest uh, incentives. Uh, we have uh, uh, basically three three areas. Uh, area one uh, one or A, area B, and area C. And from area A is uh, Luanda uh, capital of, of Angola, and uh, uh, some some. Um, some major uh, cities in the coast, uh, and the, the incentives is uh, very low when you compare that uh, other areas like uh, uh, B and C. Uh, that is that that is uh, that's happened because the Angolan government uh, wants, uh, of course, is is logic, uh, reduce the uh, regional regional uh, asymmetries. Uh, and uh, when you go to uh, interior, uh, you 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 get uh, uh, very very big incentives. Like uh, I can I can tell you from ta industrial tax from rate is uh, one and, and until ten years from incentives. Uh, that's mean uh, that's mean. You can you can make you can stay ten years without uh, pay any any industrial taxes. If you invest in area C, uh, you have uh, in area B uh, one uh, at eight years. Uh, uh, in if you if you are invested in, in this area, I I, I I need to I need to tell you that uh, the this is not a, is not a, a automatic, you know. Uh, uh, it is the the uh, ANIP or uh, uh, Angola government may uh, may appreciate uh, your your plan for investing and uh, determine uh, how uh, is the rate in this. Um, how can I say in, in, in the range? Range. range. The range. In the this range. range. In this range. And uh, it's a, another possibility, it's a extraordinary possibility, that uh, if, you, if you make a very, very, very uh, huge uh, investment about uh, 
50 million uh, US dollars. You can benefit uh, the extraordinary incentives uh, beyond that uh, I mentioned. Thank you. Dr. Abreu. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, in regards to, uh, to the compliance, the Angolan compliance framework, uh, the, yes, indeed, the, the central bank was called in 2010 to, in, uh, to start leading the Angolan uh, implementation of the Angolan system for uh, AML and CFT. Uh, since then, we, 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 we have tried to uh, implement all the legal and regulatory framework in regards to the, the financial institutions which are regulated by the central bank. But in the end of the day, we were able to uh, um, establish the, uh, the Angolan AML and CFT FT law, as well as uh, develop the, strategic, the Angolan strategic plan uh, of implementation of the AML and CFT system. Uh, since then, uh, we have been already evaluated. Uh, we have a mutual evaluation report, which was done by the World Bank, and is public. So you can actually uh, uh, have access to that report, whereby uh, uh, Angola is assessed in regards to its technical compliance. So we have uh, currently uh, two levels of compliance. One is the technical compliance, which is the, the part that Angola is now addressing and finalizing, and the second part, which is effective implementation, which is currently underway. So as our strategic plan focuses principally on the financial institutions regulated by the central bank, which represent 98% of our financial system, the central bank had a very strong role in trying to introduce all the set of regulation in regards to the core and key recommendations from Financial Action Task Force. So in regards to customer due diligence, uh, know your customer uh, obligations, uh, the correspondent banking issues, uh, the beneficial ownership uh, uh, issues, uh, as well as the training uh, uh, capacity uh, of the employees of the banks and, 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 and the market operators. So currently, I would say that we are now uh, and formally a member of the regional uh, organization that, uh, uh, which is the, the, an FSRB uh, from Financial Action Task Force, which is a Zamalek. Angola is now a member. The, in 2014, we'll be uh, uh, hosting the Council of Ministers meeting of that organization, as well as taking the presidency of that organization forward for the period of one year, uh, in the end, giving our contribution for raising the AML and CFT uh, standards uh, in the region. Uh, the implementation, well, we have here the private sector as well. And obviously that uh, as an emerging market, we face uh, most of the challenges that other countries face. Financial inclusion is, uh, is an issue. Uh, you know that we have 28% of our population bankerized, uh, unfortunately, and we are uh, currently developing our national financial inclusion plan, which will allow the growth of our uh, 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 of uh, banking access uh, from our population. But that's a, a, a tremendous challenge if we look at the, uh, 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 the the concerns on the AML and CFT issues for all emerging markets, and Angola is no. It's no, uh, it's no difference. Ob obviously that we have also uh, issues on the implementation with some bankers and some banks. Uh, not everybody is working at the same, as at the same pace, uh, but in the end of the day, I think that most of the, uh, the main banks in the country have addressed the issue very profoundly and focused, and we are uh, uh, confident that uh, in the, in the post-evaluation process, which will be uh, uh, subject to, uh, we were able to, to continue uh, receiving the, the compliments from Financial Action Task Force, which uh, 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 addresses Angola as one of the, uh, the countries uh, committed and developing a framework for AML and CFT system. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abra. I think we've come to time. So first, I'd like to really thank my panel, and I'd ask for you guys to acknowledge uh, their contributions this morning.
I would like to thank uh, Hubert and the team at AI for um, having Angola and a special panel on Angola this year for the first time. Uh, we really do appreciate that. I would also like to recognize the presence of the uh, Angolan ambassador to the United States, uh, His Excellency Alberto Bento Ribeiro, who is seated there. And just as uh, the panelists have indicated, we have come with a very robust team this morning. And so in addition to the representatives that we have here on the panel, we do have representatives from ANIP, from the diamond company Endiama, from other banks, from the business sector, from Sonangal, the national oil company, from legal firms, you've heard from one of our lawyers. And of course, you have the US Angola Chamber of Commerce to serve as your faithful conduit into Angola. Thank you. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.